All right. Good evening, everybody. We're back here on the corner at Corolla's Corner. That is it. It's all about scores.com with episode eight of the Mike Wilson show. Mike, I got to tell, tell everybody we've got a good episode ahead here tonight, but it's not going to be anywhere near as good as the Phillies post game show. I have to say. I can only imagine. <laughs> I don't think you and I could top that, but we'll try. No, absolutely not. <laughs> anyway, uh, I got to see you guys Monday. Great win, by the way. Thank you. I uh, noticed some things. I'm going to throw out what I saw. I saw a very tenacious defense. You guys held them to zero points. A couple plays, that was it. Uh, you guys moved the ball well on offense. A little inconsistent at times, would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think we held the ball for the first 18 minutes of the game out of 24 and a half. Um, we left points on the field, but we absolutely moved the ball very well at times. Um, special teams played lights out. I think we held them to like 34 yards of total offense. So, I mean, overall good win in all three phases of the game. Yeah, the defense would look, look great. Um, and, you know, they did have some really good runs. So you have some elusive uh, players there. You know, the spinning and twisting and getting out of the way, I was totally impressed. Um, I was going to ask you, now, everybody knows what happened. There was an issue. This game got pushed back to Monday. Did preparing for the, playing that Salem game a couple weeks ago during the day prepare you for – and not just a day game, but more adversity on top of that. Just something different, uh, but the mental part of it. Oh, absolutely. I think the kids did a great job handling it. I think getting used to playing a couple of day game helps. Um, our school did a great job on Monday, allowing us to treat this like a regular game. They let the kids get out of school early. We we kept our game day schedule exactly the same. All right, awesome. Uh, so the school was great with that. Kudos to our principal and superintendent for making sure all that stuff was done. But, yeah, I mean, we, our kids got out of school at 1230. We had our meetings. We, we got to Paulsboro, same time we get for any game. So everything stayed consistent for the kids. That's good. That's good. And, uh, again, it's, I like the, that school spirit there. I, I, yes. I don't, don't, I don't know your principal, but I, he obviously has some school spirit. Uh, moving forward, Friday night, Gloucester City. Um, here's a team – uh, it has a very deceptive two and three record. Um, as many might know, or some don't know, they're in a very uh, tough division. I think they've been placed in a division a little unfairly, but a lot of the group three schools and a huge non-public school in Paul the sit. Well, they're not that huge anymore, but uh, they're two and three, but they are playing these teams tough. They're hanging with them. Uh, this is no ordinary two and three team. You're going to go visit. I'm sure you know that. Let me hear what, I mean, what, what do you think going into this Friday moving forward? Well, Gloucester City, we've played them uh, for the last two years for week zero. So we've had really good games ourselves with them. 2022, they got us. We got them last year, week zero. They're well coached. They're physical. They're tough. And they're going to come out. They had a bye week. Um, they're going to be ready to play. Now, how do you think their their preparation, their their schedule that they've had uh, in, a, in a, a much harder division than a lot of schools that size. Uh, if, do you think that's going to have a big effect? I personally do think, uh, you know, it'll help them. What do you think of just about that aspect? Well, I mean, I think we're both, we both have very tough schedules. Yeah. Um, they have a tough schedule. We have a very tough schedule. Yeah. Um, so again, it's going to be a good game. And I know we I mean, shall and Gloucester has in our school history, we have played Gloucester city more than anybody else. And it's been good. I've been to a lot of those games over the years. They are good games. And what I meant by their their tough schedule, Mike. I mean they're playing bigger schools. That's what I meant. I'm not yeah. knocking your schedule at all. Oh no, I know. And and again, I think it's just going to be. I don't throw out the records, throw out everything. It's a good old fashioned rivalry game. They're going to come ready to play. We're going to come ready to play, and we'll see where the chips fall at the end. Right. What do you uh? Like, how do you match up against them? Like, what's uh? What do what do you need to do to stop this team? Uh, I mean, again, they run the ball very very well. Um, that's what they're known for doing. And I think we got to stop the run, let up no big plays, and be solid in special teams and move the ball and score when we have opportunities on offense. Um, again, like we look at our last two years with them, that's what it's come down to special teams and mistakes on both sides. Right. How do you, uh, what would you, what would you say they're, they're the number one thing they have to do to stop you guys? I mean, to, to stop us, I think you got to frustrate it all on offense. I mean, I think you saw this past Monday where we have some playmakers on offense. We can move the football. I think it's going to come down to who can stop the run game with the other team. Right. And it's, it's a good, it's, uh, I love that. It's, it's kind of like very, uh, very simple, but very exciting because yeah. as simple as that sounds, it's not. No. And the two schools are, it's a rivalry. They're going to, you know, you both know what each other is going to do. It brings an interesting chess match, uh, a little different than playing some of these teams that have a spread that go wide open. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be a little something different. Which uh, we have very physical football game. 
like one of my coaches said today at practice, it's going to be a fist fight in a phone booth. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to put it. It's yeah. um, a, lot, a lot of these young guys may not know what a phone booth is. You have to yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's going to be who wins their individual one-on-one -on -one battles. I mean, right. it, it, that's how way it's played at the last two years with us. That's the way we play. That's the way the Gloucester City plays. It's going to come down to defense, tackling, blocking, like you said, simple stuff, but it's what the game is. Yeah, but it is going to be a fun, simple type of thing. It, it's not as simple as it sounds. No, it's that's not about doing it. Um, Looking ahead at the playoffs, you guys are seeded number two right now. You went from what ten to two this week? I guess, yeah, I think six. Yes. Uh, I mean, what, what's your take on that right now? Trying not to get the kids to get too far ahead of themselves. I mean, honestly, if the kids are talking about it, I don't hear it. Um, the kids have been very focused. The short week has kept us focused. I mean, as soon as Tuesday morning walked around, all the kids were talking about was Gloucester City. Um, so they did very, they did a very good job of putting away the delayed game, moving on. And we've been we've been focused these last three days, All right? Because a victory over these guys could solidify that number. I wouldn't well not solidify the number two spot, but at least uh, give you a greater shot at getting that spot, which is going to be big in the playoffs. It's always good to have, and I hate to call any game easy, but it's good to finish second and play the 15 seed uh, rather than having to walk that gauntlet three weeks in a row or possibly four. Well, yeah, I mean our. Our goals are always be be one and zero every week, and our goal always be in the years to have home playoff games. So every game on our schedule matters. We have a very tough schedule. You do, um, <laughs> absolutely. And, and again, just set ourselves up to have those home playoff games. But we got to do one week at a time. I mean, we got a we got a tough stretch coming up. I mean, it's just been the nature of the season. Right. Looking back six weeks before you started, you knew the schedule was going to be. Uh, we'll call it a gauntlet again every week, which it pretty much has been. Uh, looking back, how did, how did the kids uh, handle that, realizing there's really no freebies in this? this year? I think the kids have grown up a lot in that aspect during the beginning of the season. We had some bumps in the road early on internally, um, learning how to play tighter games every week. And I think just every week we've just gotten a little bit better. And, and that's and that's the most important thing. And it's going to be interesting as you guys head into the playoffs. Again, uh, I can't speculate – who, who, how anything is going to fall, or even who your first first round oh, is going to be. It, it, as the coming weeks, I was talking with another coach. By the end of this weekend, it gets much easier. So only, after this weekend, there's only going to be two weekends left before the cutoff. And I've always noticed that at the two week cutoff mark, it begins, you could start taking guesses. Who would, your guess is good as mine. We've talked and, about this and, before. And mine's this not good. <laughs> Neither with, is anybody um, else's. with the yeah. new formulas and the OSIs and the new PowerPoint rankings and <clears throat> um, all that stuff. I mean, all we could do, and I guess most football coaches would say this, we can only control what it is, who we play every week, and then right. see and, how, the, uh, how everything falls. And you got a big one this week, and it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, any Anything else you want to add in before we turn off for the night? No, I mean, again, I mean, just another opportunity to play football. Gloucester City has a great environment. I like their setup. I like oh, their absolutely. field. Absolutely. Um, great football town. We've had, yeah. we have played two good year games with them, both really good football games. And I expect a third. I expect the same thing. I think it's going to be, a, it's going to be a battle and it might come down to who, who just doesn't make that fatal mistake because I think I, you're both, I think you're both going to be able to impose your will on each other a little bit, but it all depends. How much? Who, who's going to just tip that scale just a tiny bit? It's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting X and O matchup Friday night. Oh, Definitely. absolutely. Again, it's going to come down to who makes those plays at the end. This game could be decided by two or three plays. It could. could be that one play. could be at the end, field goal at the end. Yep. And I'd like to add this in there for anybody listening. You guys have a good field goal kicker. We're very blessed. Hunter does a very good job. Um, I think he hit, what, a 36-yard field goal. That probably was good for 45. You saw that, yeah. I was watching the film today. Yeah. Um, he's, I mean, again, good at flipping field position. Um, we know we can get three points. So it's nice to have that in your back pocket. Something stalls, you know, you can kick the field goal. And in a game like this, we discussed already, it could come down to that. There's something. It did last year. Yeah, 17-14. Was that last year or two years ago? For some reason, year. That was last some, some reason. That's in my head. Before we go, quick question for you. Yes. Ex these extra points, uh, Monday. I noticed you guys took a delay a game on two of them to move back five yards. What there was speculation in the stands. What happened there? Pre-game, the kicker has his routine. He likes to go, he gets to the field before anybody else. He walks around. He came to me, my special team coordinator, and said, If we score down here, I don't like the footing of where oh, to okay. where it would be. 
So we decided he has a pretty good leg. So we decided just take the five-yard penalty. Oh, okay. Rumor has it there was a hole in the field. And we're all in the stands. We're like, okay, why couldn't somebody go fix that? I was telling a story. You know, I coach Little League here in my hometown. And my pitcher a couple years ago was falling in this hole. I said, all right, we, everybody got a little handful, two handfuls of dirt each. We filled it in. Bingo. Problem solved. I'm like, why didn't somebody fill in? The-? So it was never a hole. It was just the, the field itself, the footing. It was a footing. A divot was there. <laughs> he didn't like the footing. So All right. Makes sense now. I trust my kicker. All right. I said, you know what? He can kick five yards deeper. All right. Just wanted, wanted to add that in there. That's yeah. not something we normally get to talk about. So, but the, little, the little things. I mean, kickers are, kickers have their routines, and I don't want to mess it up. No, and he, and he knew what he was doing. Hey, he, yes. he's, God bless him. Listen, Mike, thanks again. Um, again, this was Episode 8 of the Mike Wilson Show here at Carollo's Corner on It's All About Scores.com. Mike, good luck Friday night. It's going to be a great one, and we will see you guys next week. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Have a great night, Mike. You too.